For decades, the Chevy Camaro has battled against the Ford Mustang to win the hearts, minds, and, let's be honest, dollars of American car shoppers. This is the sixth generation of the Chevy Camaro, and it continues that fight for muscle car supremacy. Now, it's a little bit smaller and a little bit lighter than its predecessor. It's aimed to be a little bit more of a sports car than maybe it was before. So, let's take a closer look and see if this is the muscle car that I want to take home. How does it look? To be honest, the new Camaro looks pretty similar to the old one. The car looks best with contrast elements like the dark wheels and aero kits on this one to break up its rather plain body sides. Now, it's a good looking car and instantly recognizable as a Camaro, but it's perhaps not as striking or as modern looking as its crosstown rival. This Krypton green paint, of course, won't suit everyone. How's the storage? With just nine cubic feet of space, the trunk in this car is smaller than in a Mustang or a Dodge Challenger, but what irks me most is probably that you've got this small, weirdly shaped opening that makes putting stuff in and out kind of a chore. Now you can fold down the back seats if you need more space, but the pass-through also is a little small and weirdly shaped. The bottom line is you can fit enough stuff for a weekend vacation, but you won't be carrying bulky stuff in the back of your Camaro. Nor is there a ton of space inside. The only storage compartment is really, really small. And there are just two cup holders up front. Is it roomy? As sporty coupes go, head and leg room up front aren't bad for most drivers. The problem I have is sitting high enough to see over the high dashboard while still fitting under the roof. It's tricky to find a driving position that really lets me see out of this thing easily. As to the back seat, well, I'm not even going to try and sit back there. It's small, although to be fair, the head and leg room measurements are pretty much the same as those in a Mustang. How does the interior feel? Now, this car has some nice dress-up bits like the suede on the steering wheel and the shifter and these Recaro seats. But when I look around, there's a lot of plastic in here and none of it really looks or feels all that special, nor do most of the switches. Now, you have to remember that the Camaro starts off as a $27,000 car, so that's kind of acceptable, but this one's in the high $40,000 range. And for that much money, this interior doesn't really impress me that much. Is it well equipped? Yes, it's got things like auto climate control, a head-up display, power seats, and push-button start. But perhaps what's most interesting is that this car has the 1LE package, which is meant for racetrack performance. So, stuff you can see includes black 20-inch wheels with Goodyear Eagle F1 tires, six-piston brake calipers, a flat black hood wrap, a new splitter and rear wing, and Recaro seats. Stuff you can't see includes an electronically controlled differential, magnetic ride control suspension, and various cooling upgrades. How's the infotainment system? Chevy's 8-inch touchscreen infotainment system is great. I just wish its screen weren't tilted down so I could see it more easily while driving. All the built-in functions from music to Bluetooth, OnStar, and even the 4G LTE Wi-Fi hotspot are all excellent. And you'll find support for Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. This car also has the performance data recorder, which takes videos of your racetrack exploits and overlays data on top for YouTube posterity. Is it a good daily driver? All things considered, it's really not that unpleasant to use as a daily driver. For instance, I've got an active exhaust, so right now it's set in stealth mode, so it's actually really quiet, which means I won't annoy my neighbors. It won't be too loud when I'm driving down the highway. I can still put it in track mode if I want, but it's kind of nice to have that quiet option. And ride quality with the magnetic ride control suspension, actually really not that bad, pretty civilized given this car's got pretty aggressive wheel and tire package on it. What bugs me about daily driving a Camaro is that I can't see anything out of it. And I know that people always say that about this car, but it's really true. When you look over your shoulder to pull out of an intersection or parallel park or pull out of a parking space, 
you just can't see anything. Now I have a backup camera and I've made sure to adjust the mirrors properly and everything, but that's probably my biggest issue with using this car every day is I never feel like I can get comfortable. I feel a little cramped and claustrophobic in it and I'm always a little nervous I won't be able to see what else is around me. Is it fun to drive? It's been a couple of months since I drove a Camaro and it's really, really nice to get behind the wheel again because these cars drive really, really well. And this one being the 1LE is incredibly poised and precise. Now, ultimately the 1LE package is meant for going to track days because I'm not gonna get the 1G corner and grip that Chevy claims you can get when I'm driving around roads in Detroit. But I still really appreciate the multi-mode exhaust and the shorter rear end and all the other upgrades that you get with this. And it's plenty quick whether you're driving it on a racetrack or on roads. 4.2 seconds to 60 miles an hour in fact, which is nothing to sniff at at all. That's thanks to this big 6.2 liter V8 that gives me 455 horsepower and 455 pound-feet of torque. And it's a great engine as well, really responsive, but also just with tons of tons of low-end power from the second you get into the throttle. As you might expect from a muscle car as well, it sounds great. I've got the active exhaust set to track right now and it's nice and snarly and crackly. You've got this deep booming voice. I wouldn't necessarily choose this mode if I was driving my grandmother around in the car, but when it's just me, I really, really like how it sounds. Six-speed manual transmission, you can get an automatic, but I really, really love the beefy mechanical throws in this. So all told, I mean, the Camaro is a lot of fun, whether you get it in regular SS guys or this SS1 LE. It's really, really capable, and even when you're not blasting around a racetrack, it puts a big smile on my face every time. How's the fuel economy? As you might guess for a car with a 6.2 liter engine, not fantastic. This manual version is rated for 16 miles per gallon city and 25 highway, on premium fuel, no less. Although I will note those numbers are slightly better than a manual transmission Mustang GT. How much is it? The 2017 Camaro Coupe starts at $27,000 and the cheapest SS model is $38,000. Now the SS1 LE package adds $6,500, so after a couple of other options, this particular car winds up costing $46,445. What are the negatives? I really like driving the Camaro, but it's living with this car that's really a pain. The inside is claustrophobic, I feel like I can't see anything out, and the trunk feels a little bit smaller than its competitors. And as you'd expect from any muscle car, fuel economy really isn't that great. Who should buy it? The sixth generation Chevy Camaro appeals to a lot of people. Young drivers, drivers who are still pretending that they're young, people looking for a stylish car, people looking for a performance car. Now this SS1 LE specifically is intended for people who are going to go to a racetrack often. After all, you are paying for genuine performance upgrades. But no matter which version you choose, if you buy a Chevy Camaro and you aren't a lifelong diehard Mustang fan, well, you're going to have a lot of fun behind the wheel. If you like this Why Buy video, be sure to scroll down and hit the like button and leave us a comment if you've got any questions about this car. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel so you get a new Why Buy like this every Thursday as well as tons of other great video content. And you can keep up to date with everything we're doing on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and at motor1.com.